Hello and welcome to my channel. It's Monica from Crafting with Quilling Lady and I hope you have an absolutely fabulous day. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this accordion card using a free kit from Creative Stamping Magazine issue 99. Actually, in the magazine, you can find two of my cards I created using a stamp set called Fruity Fun, and I'll link those cards at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Also, in the magazine, you can find lots of beautiful projects and ideas you can use in your card making journey. The magazine itself comes with a for free stamp set called Botanical Bees with lots of beautiful images and sentiments and it also has a stencil that I will show you later on in the video. For today's card I needed an accordion cutting die and I used this one from Tattered Lace and I die cut it twice from Warm Yellow Card 370 GSM. Also for my panels I use this beautiful fancy next thing hexagons from Card Making Magic and I use Cool Yellow for those two elements and actually that works really well together because we have the same color family and we're going to create some beautiful project. Now I'm going to add even more beautiful colors and I decided to work with warm colors today just to give it that autumn feel but also it goes really well with all those bees. And if I wonder if you have ever created a card either with some bees or maybe you have ever created an accordion card. If you have, please let me know in the comments down below how did you make it, because this one was my first accordion card and I really like how it turned out. As you can see, I'm using a variety of different inks to give that dimension and color interest to my project. However, you can use anything that you've got in your stash and I really encourage you to play with your colors experiment and literally explore what you can create and all the names of the inks products will be in the description down below so you can check them out if you are interested also in the top right corner you can find my other video where i created floral butterfly cards using three different techniques with just one cutting die and i really encourage you to try it out because you can get really beautiful effects Okay, coming back to today's project. I wonder how much ink do you put on your projects? I think this stamp set is perfect for any mixed media projects. And you'll see that later on when I use a variety of colors and inks. And I wonder if you use your inks, do you use them only for cards or also for other projects like mixed media? I'm really interested, so please let me know. And again, I'm coming back to add even more interest on the inside panel here. And as you can see, I'm applying the ink with ink blending tool here only on the sides because in the middle, we're going to have that hexagon cutting die here beautifully. And you just have to make sure that there is a little bit of contrast. And to add that contrast, I decided to use some brown ink from Distress Oxide and I'm going to stamp this beautiful image a couple of times and actually it doesn't have to be perfect we're just creating that illusion of a background here and that's what's super unique about this stamp set you can use it for so many different occasions and different projects I wonder if you have ever created any card from free gift from creative stamping what is your favorite set? Please let me know in the comments down below. Actually, I really enjoyed creating this card. And to be honest, that was my first card using bees. Because I've never created any of those. I know it is quite popular in card making community. However, for me, it was the first time. And I really, really enjoyed it. The whole process was uh, so much fun. And... So I really, really enjoyed it. So amazing. And now when we've got all our panels, I decided to add even more interest on the back of the card. You don't have to do it. However, I wanted to give it that more interest. And also, if you want to write any message or wishes, I really encourage you to actually use that part of the card. You can create an envelope and stick it on the back. Or you can just simply write your message 
on the cut and stick it on the back. The choice is yours. I decided to decorate it with this beautiful stencil and as you can see it has two patterns and when you move the stencil you literally extend the pattern. I really really love it. Have you ever used stencils in that way? That actually really amazed me in this project that you can do it and it was so easy to create. As you can see, I'm using Distress Oxide ink here, but you can use any inks you've got in your stash. It doesn't really matter. You can also create your own inks from Aqua Markers if you want, just using a little bit of glycerin. That will work as well. And now, and now it is that time to decorate those panels here, because I wanted to give it even more dimension. And as you can see, I'm still using all those warm colors with bees theme and even then I decided to add more brown color on the edges of the inside panel and that worked pretty well for a little bit of contrast and interest. I wonder how many colors do you usually use in your projects? I'm really really curious. Here I decided to stay with two, okay let's say three colors and um, how many do you usually choose? And now I decided to use that sentiment and I'm going to use scissors to cut it because it was too big for my middle part. And yes, you can cut your stamps. They will work perfectly fine. And for this part, I'm going to use archival ink because it is waterproof. I'm not, I'm not going to put any water on top, but that was the best ink choice from my stash. And now it's time to put all those elements together and as usual I'm using my magic glue, the one and only, which is absolutely amazing liquid glue. If you have never ever tried it, I really recommend it. Now I've got watercolor card and I'm going to stamp some flowers and that beautiful bee. <clears throat> For the bee I decided to use the same archival ink because I'm going to use Aquamarkers later on from Spectre Noir to add more color and dimension to my bee. And now it is that time to add some flowers to my project and I decided to use aqua markers instead of ink pads. I think it is the easiest way to add more color to your stamps. Have you ever tried that technique? I call it no line coloring because literally you don't have any outline and using that technique with aqua markers or watercolor markers and just adding a little bit of water using a wet paintbrush, you literally create so many beautiful images and it gives you that watercolor effect. Have you ever tried it? If you have, please let me know what brand is your favorite of aqua markers or watercolor markers. You can also use Distress Oxide inks if you want. However, I don't have that many in your stash, so I decided to use aqua markers. And as you can see, I literally just tap the image using a side of my nib and then adding a little bit of water using wet paintbrush. It's absolutely amazing. And what's really amazing about having a glass mat here, I'm literally creating my own palette. As you can see, I scribble some of the colors on the side and I'm using it as my paint. So literally I'm putting my wet paintbrush in that color and then moving it onto paper to spread the colors. And with aqua markers, oh my gosh, all the colors blend so easily beautifully. I really, really love it. And if you're not happy with any of the images, you can stamp it again. Because as you can see, the flower on the left was a little bit too muddy. So I decided to create another flower. And you know me, when I create my cards, I usually go with the rule of three. So that's why I decided to have three flowers. And now I'm adding a little bit of blue to the wings of the bee. And using that wet paintbrush and aqua markers, you really have that transparent look. And I really, really love it. And if you want to add even more details, just wait for all the layers to dry. And then using your aqua markers, zig markers or watercolor markers, just add those details. Now I fussy cut all those elements. And it is that time to put all those elements together. 
As usual, I'm using my one and only liquid glue to adhere all those elements. And as you can see, I'm actually adhering all those elements first before I'm going to assemble the whole card together. Super quick and easy, and I really encourage you to do. I really enjoyed making this card, so I think I might create some more accordion cards for Christmas. Would you like to see them? Please let me know in the comments down below, because my Christmas cards are coming in September very soon. Now, when we have all those elements together, when we put the bee, we actually can shape the wings. And that's what's super unique when you fussy cut those elements. As you can see, I left tiny white gap with all those images because then I can have that contrast. Even a little bit works really fine. I applied a little bit of glue on the flap here. And then it is that time to put those cuts together and when you do it just wait a little bit to all the elements dry and now I'm getting rid of those flaps if you leave it you can add even more elements to it and maybe for the Christmas one I'll have three parts I haven't decided yet but I might do it and that's how the accordion card works and it is that time to add some small gold gems as you can see I added them in the corners of my card and you can see how this card turned out what do you think about this style have you ever tried it please let me know in the comments down below I really enjoyed it and actually it took me about 40 minutes to create the whole project so it's not that really difficult and I really enjoyed it. On the left and on the right you can check the cards that were featured in this creative stamping magazine. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And stay tuned for more videos in the future.